All right, guys, here we are. It's going to be a live roll narrated video. Uh, usually, if you guys already don't know, uh, Sensei Glick usually comes over on Wednesdays and works out with some of my judo guys and then he teaches us jujitsu. It's kind of a nice little collaboration. I have been doing this for years with them. He comes over, I teach him judo for a little while, then he teaches me jujitsu for a little while, and we just kind of live roll and work out. You know, uh, we get to kind of hang out and talk to each other, which is kind of nice. You know, he's a fellow dojo owner and, you know, he's a master at his craft. So it's a, always a pleasure just to kind of get to hang out with him and stuff like that. Uh, today, we decided to do one hour straight of just live, right? We decided to do half gi, half no gi. So if you stick around, you'll see that we're going to do some no gi later on. Uh, we're going to start off light. It's going to be sort of a two rounds in, one round off sort of a situation. So these are short three-minute rounds. So you're in for six minutes, and then you're out for three minutes is kind of the breakup, right? So at the end of the workout, you know, you're, you're putting in 40 minutes of just straight live, which is kind of a nice thing. All right, so what do we have here? We have George and Sensei Glick, uh, sort of a right side versus left side situation, right? They're just fighting for position. You know, they're easing into it, right? It's not like sort of a competitive thing because they're not competing for points really uh, what they're trying to do is just sort of test out their hypothesis and you know refine their skill set that's really sort of the goal of the training you know and uh, although sometimes we don't really determine like hey for the first X amount of rounds we're only gonna do stand up for the next amount of rounds we're only gonna do Nawaza we don't really have that sort of uh, a breakup but sometimes you know we'll just do a little bit of standing goes to the ground we'll spend some time there one person will escape and we get back her feet and we just kind of like let the field dictate it, you know? All right, so we go for a Tomonage, but right, we go right back to our feet because Sensei Glick is probably trying to work some stand up, right? George is a legitimate judo black belt, as is Sensei Glick, right? He has a double black belt situation. But, you know, maybe today you just want to work stand up, right? So, you know, here we go. That's what's happening. All right, so they're just jockeying for position here, hanging out. Oh, Sensei Glick switches right, right? He's one of the rare breeds that can throw right side and left side equally, which is kind of an amazing thing. He does a quick little collar drag drop Sanagi, like a quarter turn drop Sanagi. It's a nice thing to be able to do. You know, I'm a big fan of that for jiu-jitsu guys. Quarter turn drop Sanagi. Doesn't really work on judo guys because they're a little bit more postured up. You know, uh, I think it's definitely should be part of a jiu-jitsu person's game if you do a quarter turn drop and a full turn drop and then you could also do a collar drag and a reverse fireman that's always sort of a nice little thing to be able to do right george had the cross grip grip there and something that goes for a tomonagi all right nice easy round look they're fighting for the lapel hand and controlling the distance all right Left, you will just pull his head down, right? A little society action there. Yeah, nice simple round, a lot of grip fighting, a lot of fighting for position, you know. A lot of the times when you're going against somebody, you're feeling out for weaknesses and you know, looking for sort of advantages and opportunities. You know, uh, they both have great posture and great stance, so it's a little bit difficult. Here I go, going with George, right? A little bit higher in intensity. You know, I know uh, George is getting pretty good. <laughs> so, you know, George kind of tends to stall a little bit with me, so I was coming out a little bit fired up. Also, I have a lot of energy. It's my first one, you know, first first round. Okay, so it's classic right for right. So it's like I'm always leading with my left hand on first. Okay, I don't really like that grip coming over the head. So I try to address it right away. All right, that's not so good. I go post on the right. It's collar. There we go. Create movement. Ochigari. Right, put a little bit of pressure forward. That's always sort of a good thing to be able to do. All right, let's see. George reaches with his right hand, which is sort of the wrong move, but it's okay if you do it with purpose and intent. All right, this whole grip fighting sort of do's and don'ts, you know, there's sort of a system, right? Go for an arm drag to a leg grab. Wasn't successful, went two hands on this time, right? Now I have good dominant control. 
Okay, locked up 50-50 almost. But look, I'm moving my arm so he can't settle. Get that sleeve grip. I go for Uchimata. Not quite. All right, drop Sanagi. Yeah, tough round, tough round. Yeah, not too much throwing going on, you know, because two guys, uh, they kind of really know each other and, you know, we train together all the time, so he kind of knows exactly what to expect and the timing of the stuff that I do things. And here's another sort of positional advantage, okay? Cross grip sleeve. He tries to go around the waist. Look, I wedge my elbow in between the way because I don't want him access to my hips, right? You don't want to just willy nearly turn and then you have access to your hips, that's a great way to get countered, right? So I'm very aware of this. Especially against a strong guy like George, they could wrap you and then just lift you and throw you onto your head right away. You definitely wanna watch that sort of a thing. Yeah. There we go, double collar. Oh, George is looking for that inside position with the hand. Right, looking for that Ipon Sayanagi Kosoro situation. Quick Katagruma trick to break up the sort of the patterns. Sleeve, hand on the lapel, overhand to Ochi. Right. George is fighting a little bit defensive, but it's okay. You know, that's fine. I'm, I get to work on my offense in that case. Right. Front headlock. Right. And then I don't bother going in the Waza because we're kind of just working. Mostly Tachiwaza. There goes George's contacts. It's a thing that tends to happen sometimes. <laughs> and Georgie is out. Now me and Sensei Glick. Love working out with Sensei Glick. He's got such good technique. All right, the way we work out, we sort of kind of go back and forth and trade attacks. And we do lots of movement and gripping which I love that. You know, he's very nice to work out with. All right. Oop, that little collar drag, quarter turn, drop, go for a double. Oop. Love that, you know, shooting in on the legs and then climbing up the body. It's one of my favorite things to do. Hard to kind of go against jiu-jitsu guys because of the neck exposure. You know, you shoot in on the legs, you're climbing up the body, and when you're climbing up the body, you inadvertently expose your neck, So, which kind of is a thing that, you know, I'm always aware of. You know, I have uh, pretty good shots from my wrestling days, but I don't like to just dive underneath and expose myself, you know, for the guillotine risk and things like that. Not, you know... Loving that kind of a thing. Oops, it's a good going. Kosoto hip throw, Kosoto hip throw. It's very nice. All right, cross sleeve, Kouchi. Beautiful. Yeah, a lot of the times what we're doing here is just looking for openings. You know, uh, from there, can he just dive bomb a massive harai and go for it? Yes, but then, you know. Sometimes you train like that, and sometimes you train just to look for openings. Uh, especially, there's a big weight difference between me and Sensei Glick. So, you know, we definitely do sort of a lot more mobility-based sort of fighting. Nice. Right over the back. Looking for that Uranage situation, right? Trying to jockey for head position. Right, but since the Glick moves out of it and elbow passes, really nice. Got good judo, good stand up, good wrestling, good jujitsu. You know, really, really nice. All right, over under position, Kosoda.
nice, just one-handed kosher gurma. That's always sort of nice to have in the mix. Love it, love it, love it when Sensei Glick comes by and we get to hang out. You know, we have two kids, so, you know, I have a kid, he has a kid, so we get to talk about that. And, you know, uh, over the years, he's become such a close friend of mine, so I really enjoy that. You know, uh, he comes in, we work out together. You know, George is also a great person to have in the room. Just a smart, friendly guy, you know, kind, trains hard, all that stuff. And this is such a great union. You know, we trust each other. Sometimes George does some dangerous stuff. Uh, but, you know, he's aware of, like, weight differences and, you know, the way he his body is. And, you know, he has some body awareness. So he's not going to stick a leg out and wrap a leg and just rip it. You know what I mean? So those are the types of people that you want to definitely, you know, get some reps in with. So, yeah, I'm very blessed to have uh, these two training partners. And, you know, it's by design, too, right? Uh, Sensei Glick goes lefty. Sensei George goes righty. So I have a, a right-handed person, right-sided person, and a left-sided person. So, you know, I get some training variability. You know, sometimes we shoot, sometimes we don't. Obviously, we have some, you know, Newa, very experienced Newaza from Sensei Glick here. So that's really nice. All right, as you guys could see, we transitioned a little bit to go to the ground now. So now we're going to sort of pick up sort of the Nawaza situation. Love this, you know, since it look, keeps everything tight. All right. I also love working out with Sensei Glick because he doesn't just hold good positions and just keep it there. And, you know, you could just kind of keep these winning positions forever, you know, for, in perpetuity. But a lot of the times so he'll let you work out of stuff. And, you know, I think that's what you'll see here when, you know, uh, let's just say, for instance, like I'm in his closed guard or something. He'll let me open it. You know, he'll let me pass. He'll let me work from side control. You know, and those are sort of the types of training partners that you want to accumulate. You know, people who you can feel safe enough to work losing position and such. Oop, nice reverse Kataguma. Love that. Big fan of that. Yoko Tomonage, nice, love that, right? Just straight into the sort of the open guard position. Pushing and pulling, going for that wrestling up single leg. Nice. Just a great training. George is working on that guard retention, right? And then Sensei Glick goes right into the quarter mount. Kind of nice, you know, you knee cut, you go through, and then you encounter this resistance and you go quarter mount right away that's kind of a nice thing to be able to do right i gotta start drilling that a little bit more my walls is kind of lacking so mm. and if you notice we're not really playing strictly by judo rules or even jujitsu rules for that matter like we're not trying to gain you know, points through a rule set, right? So you'll see, like, even if I'm going with George and I'm in the pin position, I'm not just going to hold the pin. You know, I want to hold him for, you know, one, three, four, five seconds and then move to transition to new things and, you know, try new ideas and, you know, even take the back and look for submissions, right? So there's just like sort of an overall grappling feel here. You know, we're shooting in the legs. We're not, we're not worried about grip fighting and stuff. Like, you know, traditional IJF grip fighting. All right, here's me going for Tomoinage. Thought it was time to transition a little Newaza. Tried to go arm drag to the back. All right, we're switching. Doing a little Newaza action here. Transition into the back. You know, this is the thing. Like, George is notoriously hard to finish from this position. I'm still figuring it out. You know, I understand trapping an arm, going for the stuff. But he has such good force pulling the hand down from this losing position. And he's just a very, very difficult uh, person to, to finish on the ground. You know? I do want to see him... <laughs> 
it's you know work on his escapes a little bit more as opposed to just straight up defense because I do think there's a difference between being good at defense and then being good at escaping right those two are not you know completely different things and I mean they are completely different things they're similar things but uh, it's a little bit different right you have to look at it in that way you know it's the equivalent of doing stand up one door and actually going to take the person down as opposed to working not to get taken down you know so you can kind of be defensive and that way you don't really you know open up and try new things offensively yeah yep just casually doing the waza yeah you know you're just such a difficult person to finish here you know I must say I'm a little bit embarrassed. I'm just sitting there, not finishing. And if you guys have some tips, please keep it to yourself. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, so yeah, working a little Mayweather. We're gonna probably go Dundogi a little while, but we're kind of transitioning more from Tachiwaza to the Mayweather sort of rounds. Uh, it's a different type of a skill, you know, a different type of dynamic feel to it. A lot more isometric contractions when you're doing Mayweather. Like right here, the goal. I mean, neither of us are super explosive. Not a lot of movement can be made, so. You know, it's a different kind of a thing. What happened here was he was actually just pulling down on my foot, and my I've been having some foot pain, so he was kind of squeezing my foot with his thighs, and you know, I, I literally almost tapped just because of that, you know, because my foot was hurting. Um, you know, a little embarrassing, but uh, here we go. Yeah, the Tachiwaza stuff and the Neiwaza stuff, it's completely different energy systems, you know. It's sort of the equivalent of like Olympic lifting where you're trying to like do a clean and jerk or like a snatch. I and mean, with Neiwaza, it's more sort of like these slower bodybuilding hypertrophy movements. Uh, things are a little bit slower in terms of like speed and tempo and explosivity, you know. So... Right with that slowdown and speed, you know, there comes a little bit more of the I go here, you go there, I go here, you go there. You know, with Tachiwaza, it's a lot more like a goalie trying to guess which direction the penalty kick is coming, right? A lot, a lot of it is intuitive, fast, and explosive. So here we are, doing a little Neiwaza. And this is him just kind of letting me get that overhook, and he goes underneath. Is that knee lever? I'm looking to try to attack a leg or something. I'm looking for that barrel bull or roll, but since it looks too slick, he scoots his hips and tries to take my back. And then kind of lets me get this underhook position again. You know, and he goes for the sumi thing. All right, he lets me pass. Let's me do a lot of things, you know. And I'm very appreciative of that. And then I get to ask him questions later. Hey, you know, what would I what would you do in this situation, that position? And you know, we have sort of a nice narrative. This is sort of a, a cross-body sort of crab ride situation that we kind of find ourselves in a lot. You know, he's always sort of getting the best of me there, which is really a, a you know, I gotta kind of buckle down and really learn it, you know, eventually. Ooh, oh, oh, yeah, nice, there we go change directions, shot Tomonage into this Omoplata thing. That's a little scramble. I love the way he just kind of uses his arm. Oh, there it is. He just climbs right into a single. That's nice. Yeah. I highly value this kind of uh, training, you know. Uh, very beautiful. Coachy leg pick, he goes inversion. So he's got that sort of, what is that, the tornado sweep thing he's going for. All right, he climbs up, shoots him in the leg, goes back to Managi Juji, grabs an ankle, tripod sweep. 
Alright, beautiful. What a nice little round. You know, a lot of flow, a lot of movement. Big fan of that. Alright. It's like really truly this like egoless rolling situation that I'm such a huge fan of. Like that really goes a really long way. Yep, time's rolling, Georgie. Should have had his belt tied, but don't know why he didn't have his belt tied. He had two minutes, three minutes to just tie his damn belt. But, you know, didn't have his belt tied. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> all right, go see Lapel. What's coming? What's coming? Tomoe action. Oops, not down yet. Tomoe, there we go. Nice Tomoe. George Foster's hip. Nice, nice. tricep grip usually when that tricep grip comes you got to be ready for a kataguma right so these are some of these little things that you little by little pick up right since a uh, grip is being very sneaky he's starting off as a lefty and then he goes righty and then he goes collar drag right really nice he has lots of these little tricks that right he could just sort of just pull out of his pocket and it's like here it is you know Close guard situation. I remember mentioning after our, our one hour live roll here, saying like, oh man, I've never actually seen you in close guard ever. And uh, you know, he said, yeah, you know, I've never, I try never to get caught up in close guard. You know, I don't really like being there. And, you know, here he is uh, kind of putting himself in it. You know, and I think that's important. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, it's like the paradox of like being really, really good at judo. People assume you're good at break falls, but the better you get, the less you get thrown, and the less you drill break falls, so then the less you get better. You know, you actually get worse at break falls. You know, so it's like, oh, you do so much judo, you must be really good at falling. It's like, actually, it's the contrary, you know? So sometimes you just gotta put yourself in these situations, right? And rewatching this stuff is really nice for me too, because I just saw myself being in this sort of mount position with George, and you know, how do I approach that and then how does Sensei Glick approach that is sort of a nice way for me to look at it you know not that I'm going to go drill it you know it's like I'm not like a high level competitor anymore and not competing for anything and you know I try not to get obsessed with my game you know because it's just like a rabbit hole that I could just kind of go down forever so you know I'm probably not going to like drill it but it's nice to see the differences of like oh Sensei Glick is going for this you know so I'm going for that and you know how do I sort of you know, why is that in the first place? That's the important question that I have to be able to answer. It's like, why does he do it the way he does it? And why do I do it the way I do it, you know? Tough for Georgie here too, because he gets to do Glick first and then me second. So, you know, that's gotta be a little bit tiring. Yep, nice shot. Trying to keep the hands disconnected. Fighting for this. Right? The key to like shooting in on the legs with a gi is like if you get too close, you get gripped up and now you can't shoot, right? So it's like pulsing on the lapel, pulsing on the lapel. You make it look like you're pulsing, you change levels and shoot, right? That's sort of kind of the thing. A right, nice little leg pick there. All right, I like that sit down situation and then attack in the back. You know, we spend a lot of time here. I probably could be a little bit tighter with my head position there. You know, uh, if George really wanted to escape, he probably can put his head to the floor, back to the floor, right? Just like how he just did. I'm probably gonna try to climb up and go mount or something. Nope. George goes to his side, staying behind. Am I a neon belly? 
that's a thing. <clears throat> if you're a jiu-jitsu guy. It doesn't really happen in judo so much. You know, like I said, the rule sets kind of changed the way it looks. Looking for Jiu-Jitsu stuff, trying to pin that bottom hand and then Juji back take. Yeah, I definitely have to work on my finishes from the back. It's definitely lacking. It's kind of a tough position for me because I have these like really short, stubbly legs too. And there you go, switching to Juji, but I'm trying to give it up. Hmm. Just casually get the pin there. That's nice. <laughs> Go. Working out with Sensei Blick. <coughs> hey, two on one. All right, single. Trying to cut the corner, go behind. All right, notice the way I sat into that, right? I'm not diving down his legs. It's too dangerous to do that. So never ever do that. You know, I see people taking the back, jumping up and, you know, attacking the legs. You gotta like, you know, with a training partner, you have to be gentle, right? You can't throw yourself at their knees because it can tear someone's ACL, you know, really, really important stuff. Even when we're moving around really fast, like we're very safety conscious and Longevity really is the secret ingredient in getting better at this stuff. So, you know, how do you stay in the sport for a really long time? It's training safely. Training safely and smart. Those things are all really, really important. All right, nice little pulse on the left. All right, once you have that sleeve hand too, it's very difficult for them to shoot, so you don't have to worry too much about the shot. You really want to encroach the hips given that you have some throwing power and throwing ability, you know? I think that's sort of a understated thing when it comes to just general grappling. I know judo emphasizes the posture a lot. And, you know, you hear people throw out the terms, you know, posture, posture, but it's like, okay, why, right? Why are you? Why do you want to keep your posture upright? It's like, oh, because it's much more uh, able to throw the person easier. It's like, but why? Right? You have to know the why behind it, you know. So teaching that's important. Let her go for a little rolling knee thing which she kind of lets me yeah this is nice just uh, watching this video and making this video you know it's kind of relaxing actually like, I feel like I gotta do more of this That collar hand right there is really immensely annoying because I can't shoot underneath, you know, and he's always kind of monitoring monitoring it and he's kind of autopiloting it, you know, as he's doing here, he's trying to work other stuff with the other hand, you know, and that's the mark of, I think, a great grappler. You know, your one side can be doing something automated. That way you could sort of look a little deeper, look two steps in, three steps in and kind of be ahead of the game and you know, look for patterns while, you know, your body's sort of naturally, you know, doing stuff that it's supposed to be doing, you know. Right. Nice, up. All right, this is probably about the time we go nogi. <clears throat> yeah, the gi 
knees are coming off. Kind of nice. You know, we've been talking a lot about like uh, no gi stuff, and wrestling up is such a big thing now. You know, wrestlers are getting so much clout in the jiu-jitsu world, and they're starting to cross train and all this stuff. So, yeah, I think that's something where that was kind of the theme that we were talking about even before the practice today. So, you know, I think that's what you're gonna go see. You know, that's the beauty of this training sort of style, right? It's like two practices don't really look the same. You know, you'll see me later on going for like, you know, Imanari and stuff like that because I'm kind of working on those things. Uh, it's not something that's part of my arsenal, nor do I even think it'll be something really good for me because I'm afraid the heavyweight's going to sprawl. I mean, you know, I like lower back stuff and, and I don't want to be exposed to that risk, right? So, you know, but I do go for it, and that's kind of sort of the idea that these practices, no two practices look identical because you're trying new things, you're trying, you know, different ideas. Uh, like I just said, you know, we were talking a lot about wrestling up, so, you know, that should be sort of the main theme of the practice, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, you have an idea, you want to work those ideas out, right? This is kind of an interesting one because George is a pure judoka, right? He's a judo black belt. Uh, you know, recently he decided he wants rank in jiu-jitsu, so Sensei Glick gave him a blue belt in jiu-jitsu. So he doesn't really have any other grappling experience outside of that. He's a great judo guy, uh, but wrestling is something that, you know, he doesn't have a lot of experience in. You know, here's that little dummy sweep. All the jiu-jitsu guys call it double kouchi. So that's really interesting, and Sensei Glick has great wrestling, you know, but he's never wrestled in college or anything like that. And, you know, as you guys know, I wrestled, you know, for many, many years. So it's kind of a nice, diverse sort of uh, skill when it comes to just straight, pure wrestling, you know. Um, but wrestling in this grappling context, it's very different, obviously, because you can't just shoot, you know, because of the guillotine risk and the Kimura risk and all those different things, right? So it does look a little bit different, but uh, you know, a great way to train here, you know? Right, George kind of struggling with the different types of finishes, and you know, of course he's gonna struggle with that a little bit, just because we haven't really covered it. Like there's no scenario where it's like, hey, these are three finishes that you could do that work really well together with a single leg, and that we don't really have time to kind of cover everything, you know? So he's kind of just taking it as it goes, and you know, good for him, right? being out there. He likes Nogi too, which is a great thing. Little back attack action. Nogi. Big fan of that. Now that's an interesting thing about the Nogi stuff. Like if you want to submit someone in Nogi, you have to be really, really tight. Gi, you can be far away because of the lapel. You, know, you kind of be away and you can choke and you have these handles. The only way to really choke without the gi is, you know, creating, encircling the limb, which is the neck here, right? Neck and arm or slash, right, both. Uh, and then creating sort of that compressive, restricting force, you know? So here you go. Two on one, right? Two on one, elbow drag to the other side, right? Lots of feints. Kind of looking chubby in that rash guard. <laughs> I'd probably go on a diet. A little too heavy for my taste. All right, two on one, post shot. Going into sort of this. Right, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work that little Aoki lock that uh, Sensei Glick showed me today. You know, you go for that straight ankle lock, and the foot comes, you know, slipping loose, and then the and you go for that Aoki situation. All right, George going for that Imanari roll and kicking me in the mouth. I remember that. That was pleasant. <laughs> well, he's framing underneath my arm, which is the right thing to do. All right, a little gift wrap situation. <clears throat> hey, you got a thing with that foot again. I'm just trying to squeeze my foot. 
pretty uncomfortable. Stay tighter on that one. Yeah, stay tighter. And it's nice to see yourself train and practice and roll. You know, you see all the gaps, see all the things that you could be doing better. You know, I highly recommend filming yourself in training and then watching it. You know, and not generally putting it up on YouTube because you know I always thought that was a little bit weird. You know, like someone trains with you and you kick the shit out of them and then you put it online. It's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of a Sort of a, a little bit of a party foul, you know, not, I've done that before, truthfully. I mean, like, I have a YouTube channel, and it's kind of, you know, something that I do now, so it's like I, every now and then I do it, but, you know, a lot of it for me is ed educational purposes, you know, more so than, like, watch me beat the hell out of these guys, and, you know, look how good I am, uh, you know, even though there's a little bit of that going on here, you know, obviously. You know, it's nice, the online validation, you know, people saying, oh, you know, your skills or whatever it is. And that's something I've been working on right there, you know, back taking and then forget it and then going switching back to the front headlock sort of guillotine position. I haven't really quite hit it yet, you know, figured it out yet. My arm and guillotine is always a little bit loose, uh, you know, and I find myself being able to do it on smaller people, obviously just you know arm length and neck size and you know George is uh, one of my main training partners and he has humongous lats and traps so you know it's a little bit difficult I think and those physical differences really make a difference but I still have to kind of learn to adjust a little bit more all right here I go for that single leg all right since they go to a nice defense so from behind all right Wrestling up. Mm, kind of like a semi crucifix looking thing. But okay, because you know my arm's on the outside, you know? If they're almost trapped in between the legs, then I'd really be in trouble, right? Wrestling with the leg binding. <coughs> like that kind of like hooks over the double, you know, that's like sort of a Khabib thing, you know, that's good for grappling, yeah, you know, that sort of thing, you don't see it that much in judo, right, going back for ankle lock, but it's too much slack, you know, it's got to be tighter on the foot, got to be at the end of the lever, You know, that's something that when I have a conversation with Brian, he's always saying, like, ah, oh, you, you got to make sure that my toes aren't wiggling. You know, that's a great indicator of right tightness. Oh, you can wrestle up really nice. Yeah, pretty big traps. You got to work on that gut, though. Yeah, I've been liking that too right there, you know, shifting my weight to the other side and bringing that leg across. Yeah, I've been liking that. And I fall right into the triangle choke. It's kind of a nice little situation there. And, you know, you could have finished it there pretty easily, but decided to kind of let it go and work the crucifix position. And Trying to work this kipping escape. Hmm, then time. That's a little scramble. Yeah, I really enjoy this sort of pace, you know. Uh, <coughs> two on one off is always nice because you kind of regroup and 
you know, you're being pushed the second half. So it's kind of a nice little thing. All right, George with a two on one front headlock here. All right, front headlock counter, trying to put him to the ground. And now looking immediately for the guillotine, which is a nice thing. Try to refinish it. No, no. Over, is that on trap? I'm looking at it. That's always nice. If you can trap that arm, and you got two arms to work. triangle yeah, those are really hard to escape <coughs> yeah I hate being in that position you know someone has a body triangle on me they have really long legs you know, they're just slowly peeling away at your hand and, you know attacking your neck not very pleasant at all you know It's always harder to finish someone when they're not actively trying to escape. When they're trying to escape, they're trying to clear the legs and doing stuff. And, you know, he's dedic George is dedicating 100% of his time right now just to defend, right? So it's always harder to finish somebody that's sort of playing that kind of a game, you know? This is kind of nice just staying out and watching judo, jiu-jitsu. Commentating. This is, I think, might be my new thing. You know, if you guys like it, please let me know. Uh, yeah, I didn't know where I was headed with this sort of video. Uh, I was just gonna film the training session, and I thought, ah, you know, maybe I'll just take bits and pieces of it, and you know, put it up on, <coughs> you know, YouTube and whatever it is. And I kind of just had no idea which direction I was gonna go, but I just figured out this picture-in-picture -picture overlay situation. What you guys are watching right now with like. The live action here and then my face in the corner over there. Uh, I just figured it out on an iMovie. So, you know, I kind of wanted to try it out. Don't know if this is helpful. Don't know if this is going to be fun and interesting to watch. You know, <clears throat> here I am. Uh, I say to George for this round, can you start on my back so I can work on defense? You know, and that's always sort of a nice little thing that I sometimes try to do. Uh, you know, let's just start in this position. I'm pointing out like George's feet crossed and then I go for this little thing but I actually don't you know end up finishing it even asking I remember even asking him like hey George are you is your ankle okay he's like yeah yeah it's fine right actively trying to is put my back to the floor and escape now I'm in mount all right let's try that kipping escape Kipping, 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 kipping. Not very good. You know, working on it, working on it. You know, people always ask me like, "Hey, man, you guys gotta do more judo." Nawaza videos, Nawaza videos. It's like one of the most requested things. But it's like, yeah, I'm good at Nawaza. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, I'm great on my feet. You know, <laughs> not to like sound like you know cocky or anything like that, but like, I really know the stand-up stuff in the judo side and there we go there's that kip and escape I want to be a hundred percent confident that sort of my system with the Nawaz is you know tight before I can start teaching it and I don't want to repeat like oh I learned this from this person let me just reteach it I don't really want to do that I want to I want it to be sort of my proprietary thing of like you know my ideas my methods my spin on things my details like you know that's gonna be 
immensely helpful. Like that's sort of the way I want to teach. So I don't want to just like, ah, this is a turnover that I saw once. Ah, this is an onboard that I saw once. That's why I'm sort of still kind of not, you know, really teaching the Wazoo too much on my channel. Um, as I go forward and sharpen my Nawaza skills, I think I will get a little bit more confident in uh, teaching it. But you know, it's very easy for me to be, uh, you know, I'm a little bit sort of hypercritical with my own stuff sometimes. So, you know, it takes me a little while for me to feel comfortable enough for me to actually like put it out there, you know. Because now I have 120,000 critiques online, like, hey man, your Tatoshi sucks, <laughs> whatever it is, and it's like, oh man. You know, I try to ignore these negative comments, but you know, I gotta not, not lie, like sometimes those things kind of sting, you know? So, my favorite is, is the criticisms from people who know, have no clue what they're talking about. I kind of like those, you know? It's like when you post like a, a Sotogari or something and people are like, oh, this will never work in real life. It's like, all right, you know, like, it clearly does. I mean, people hit it in MMA and it's been pressure tested and people do it on the street sometimes and you know, you see people actually hitting it. It's like, how can you think that it will not work in real life? You know, you clearly have no clue. You know, so those comments, those little negative comments, they, they kind of make me chuckle a little bit. I don't really mind. Uh, but yeah, sometimes, you know, the criticism can, can you know, sting a little. All right, there we go. Front headlock stuff. <clears throat> All right. Head, leg, clean that. Oh, the Minari roll. Terrible. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just so scared. Like, I threw out my back so many times, like, trying to deadlift 600 pounds. And that was always my goal. Like, deadlift's goal was 600 pounds. And, you know, I didn't warm up properly one day, tweaked my back. You know, I was in Japan training one time. And, you know, I was nursing a back thing. And someone yanked on me, and I tweaked my back. So now I'm like, it's not like a recurring thing, but I'm much more aware that I could throw my back out. So spinning on the knee for an Imanari where someone can potentially sprawl on me and you know me having to go through the agony of dealing with a thrown out back is something that I don't really want to risk, you know? So, but you know, I know I trust Brian won't sprawl on me there. So that's why I really like training with him, you know, because I know he's not going to, do anything that's gonna put me in harm's way you know even you know when he has like a heel hook in he's not gonna crank it he's gonna give me an opportunity to slip out of it or work out of it and he'll never crank it he'll take it and then just you know like catch and release when it comes to the submission stuff especially when it comes to leg lock stuff because you know I think that's my biggest uh, gap in my knowledge obviously I know how to do it because I train with Brian and Brian's a master at the leg locks you know, look at him just going underneath and attacking the legs. Right? Yeah, so Brian's amazing with leg locks. So it's like, of course I know some, but it's definitely not something that I would consider myself, you know, super proficient at. All right, so I'll go for it. He'll let me work on it, you know. Being able to train it safely without the risk. Like, I will never train leg locks with, you know, someone I don't really know. You know, and I would do sort of, like, if you were a jiu-jitsu guy and, you know, you wanted to work out with me and I, I've never met you before, you could probably count on me playing a much more heavier game and more of a body lock game and not even giving you access to my legs uh, just because I don't want to be in that position, you know. And, yeah, you know, it's, oh, yeah, get in that position and learn. But I, if I don't trust the person that he's not going to crank on my legs or give me a, you know, clean opportunity of time to escape or work out of it, you know, then I'm not going to put myself there, you know. Uh, <clears throat> people ask me, like, how did you hurt your elbows? It's like, there was this woman one time that, you know, I'm rolling with, and, you know, uh, she put me in an arm bar and just freaking fell back and cranked on it. And it was like, holy moly, man, like, lady, like, you almost broke my arm, you know. And she's like, oh, I just got excited, you know. And then, you know, like, it was like pain, pain. And then it's like, we trained again, like, a couple months later. And we're doing like on bar escapes or something. And this lady cranked on my other elbow, you know? So I have like two like sore elbows, you know, in this time period. Like they're better now, but you know, there's like still like, you know, scar tissue stuff. And you definitely put mileage on your joints, you know? So, you know, never again, 
you know, if I ever train with that person again, I'm never going to give her my arm, you know, uh, things of that nature, you know, and it's someone that I didn't think, you know, uh, and it's natural, you know, you're going with a teacher or sensei or a black belt or a red and white belt in judo, you know, and they think, oh, if this person could get out of it really easily or, oh, there's no way I could hurt this person or, oh my God, I, I can't believe I got an arm bar. I really want to finish it. Da! You know, they do that thing and they mess up your elbows, you know, inadvertently maybe. You know, so you kind of have to like really be careful for those things when you're training. But it goes back to the thing I was saying about, you know, with, with Sensei Glick. I know he's not going to, you know, crank on my ankles or knees and stuff like that. So I feel comfortable, you know, training and trying new things. Right. Like baiting that leg so he can kind of work his defense. Love that. Cut the corner. Does that butterfly hook want to go in or not? In or not? You never know, right? And keeping that right foot there so he doesn't hop over to the side that's the safe side for the escaping that guillotine all right using that foot keeping him funneled toward the side that he wants him on <coughs> right he's very active with that mm. Yeah, considered like just taking all this footage and putting like some lo-fi hip-hop in the background, <laughs> just posting it the whole thing, but I don't know. I was like watching it and I started like commentating it in my own head like, oh yeah, this is something nice that I've been doing or he's been going for and so I kind of just kind of went that angle, you know. Maybe you guys let me know if you like it or not. I could probably do this with my stand-up one day too. You know? What I'm doing right now is like I have the iMovie on one side over here, watching the actual footage and then filming myself on like the selfie camera thing on my MacBook Pro. And then I'm just taking that video after it and then I drag it into the iMovie and then like I do the picture in picture layout situation. That's what I've been doing. A little uh, editing tip for you, you know? I just figured out how to do that. So maybe, you know, it's a little bit easier to do. I've done it before with like some OBS streamer software thing, but it was too complicated and it was just too much work. And I love that when someone posts, you do the double chop and then you change levels and shoot. Nice shot. Climbing up the body. Oh yeah, I remember this. George jumps guard from this front headlock position. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, do not jump guard. Tanya Toshi, Kani Basami, taking someone straight back over their ankles. Right, those are sort of things to kind of avoid in practice. You're throwing someone, landing on them. You know, that's why you see big throws happen and people dive over, you know, so they don't break their ribs. You know, if I'm <clears throat> taking a double leg takedown and I'm going to my back, there has to be sort of this reciprocity of uh, respect, I guess, or sort of unspoken thing where if he's taking me down with a double, he's not landing on top of me, okay? And if he's not landing on top of me and he's creating a little distance, I don't bring my knees up to my chest so he lands on my knees when you're doing the double. So it kind of goes both ways, right? You know when you're sunk or when you're getting taken down with a double leg takedown, right? This is not like for, I'm not talking about like wrestling. I'm talking about like double leg takedowns for specifically for grappling, you know, in training in this setting, in your gym, whether you're doing jujitsu no gi or just takedowns or drilling, you know, when you're getting taken down with a double, right? When you're taking the person down with a double, you don't land on them. I mean, you do sometimes, <laughs> right? But if 
you're not landing on them and you're giving them space, you don't bring your knees up to your chest so you don't land on the other person's knees. You know, some of these things should be, you know, explicitly said a little bit more, you know. That's a good thing working that hips forward thing. I love it. I really like uh, you know our sessions. It's very informative. You know, if you ask me, hey, what do you think about this grip stuff from judo and Tachiwaza stuff? And you know, he comes in and you know he actually does a lot more inversion to sort of like this mobility passing situation, which is not really suitable for a person of my body type. You know, really short legs, really not so mobile. You know. Uh, so I, I greatly appreciate it when he comes in with certain lesson plans and he's like, hey, I was thinking about this methodology for you because, you know, if you're a fat ass, you know, you can't do any of the stuff that I do. <laughs> you know, I kind of enjoy that kind of uh, instruction, you know. It's truly, it feels differentiated, you know. It feels like he's putting some thought in it before he gets there. You know, maybe he's winging it, but at least, you know, it's catered to sort of my body type, which is kind of always a nice thing, you know. It's a nice skill to be had, you know, to be able to hand fight off a sunk single up to the ankles. That's nice. Nice little wrestling scramble there. Shin to shin. Love that shin to shin. Trying to clear it, clear it, wrestle up. Front headlock stuff. Deep path stuff. Looking for the leg lock stuff. Fine. That little body locking stuff. I love this kind of training, you know, really, because when I'm going against someone, you know, I'm much heavier. I'm like 230 now. I could just kind of use my weight and pressure down and pass and pressure pass and pass and just put a lot of pressure forward. And I could specifically just play that kind of a game and, you know, do a whole practice essentially. But, you know, I don't find that enjoyable, you know, and I think if you're trying to win, right, and if I'm really trying to refine that game of just body lock top, pressure, body lock, top pressure, pass, you know, control and just sort of using my, you know, short stature and weight, like, yeah, you know, I think that would be sort of the solution if you're trying to compete and win, you know, double down on stuff you're good at, but if you sort of want a diverse game and you really want to learn the game as a whole, I think this is the kind of training you need to be able to do, you know, going from position to position and looking at sort of scrambles and giving up your back and, you know, working out of it. Yeah, you gotta go on a diet. You know, uh, very grateful that my rash guard here is black. You know, so you don't really, black is slimming. You know, but, uh, I'm definitely carrying, you know, 20 pounds too much of the, the body fat here. And, you know, part of the reason why I decided to narrate this also, or not use original audio, is because I'm freaking wheezing and panting. You know, like a gorilla in heat, you know, uh, just gassed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Too big and, you know, so. It's just wheezing. Yep, that's the thing here, All right? Here's an unspoken rule. Like, if you're doing no gi, like, don't grab the gi pants. <laughs> right, that's another thing, you know, right? Generally, like, you're not supposed to do leg lock stuff in no gi while wearing gi pants because there's no slippage, right? So it's sort of an unspoken rule, like, hey, if we're wearing pants, 
you know, the general defense of slipping the leg through and through or towards you, like push it through or th pull towards you, like, you know, those defenses kind of become very difficult because of the friction of the gi, you know, so generally, as a rule of thumb, like when you're wearing pants, you don't go for knee reaping, leg lock stuff. Uh, mostly like the twisting locks, heel hooks and stuff. Uh, but you know, George just doesn't care. You know, he just grabs his pant leg and does whatever he wants. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, we're we're getting to that mark. Close to the end. This is a pretty cardio heavy workout that we did. You know, it was essentially an hour straight after we already sort of did a little bit of instruction, you know, so like an hour of just give and take on knowledge and ideas and, you know, we caught up for the week. That's, you know, actually, I got to tell you, like, we do this on Wednesdays usually and then Brian coming in and, hey, man, how was your week, you know, and telling him about my weekend with my kid and, you know, he's telling me about his weekend with his kid. Like, I, I really enjoy that part too, you know. You know, and that's why you need good partners that, you know, uh, that you could respect, not just on the map, but like on the outside too, you know, he's a, you know, good father and a nice man and, you know, I love and respect that about him. So, you know, I look forward to this, you know, and it's kind of like a little bit of my outlet and it's not something that I'm going into the dojo to teach a class or people looking at me for answers or making business decisions, it's just straight up coming in and training, you know, so I love that. You know, and it's also efficient because, you know, it's also, right, he's coming and it's efficient because we get to train and it, it takes care of sort of like, like that social need that I have. You know, I've, everyone has social needs, right? You know, and I get to see my friend and my friend's good at this stuff, you know, so, yeah, it's a wonderful thing. You know, it's hard to make friends as a grown up, you know, I think uh, I'm 37 now. It's like, what, I'm going to. You know, make friends, male friends at the park. Not even just male friends, but like friends at the park. Like, hey man, you wanna like, you know, are you into judo or jujitsu by any chance, you know? And ninety nine percent of the time the answer is no. You know what I mean? And it's like, hey man, you know, you wanna join our Zoc soccer team and freaking, you know, the co ed softball league and you know, uh, go get some burgers and watch the big game and it's like I'm not, you know, <laughs> that's not me, you know, so you know, I highly value this time that we do and Hope you guys got a little bit of enjoyment out of watching, taking a peek in um, to our little weekly lives of just training, Wednesday training. Yeah, my stomach's got to go, man. Holy moly. That's that visceral underbelly fat that's pushing my stomach outwards. George is yoked too, man. Look at that guy. All right, I think we have one last loud rep left. That will conclude this. Please let me know in the comments if you like sort of this method of video. Uh, look at me pulling guard. Nope, nope. Take the knot, rustling up. Head pops out. Yeah. patch on the back of my head if you guys haven't noticed that yep, here we go putting those hooks in all right and then we're going for that uh, it then splits me yeah. okay you got it georgie <laughs> uh, i remember that one Boy, do I love this kind of training. Mm. 
that stuff's really interesting too. You know? Maybe one day it'll be incorporated into the judo curriculum. Who knows? Little Udegarami with the legs. Ashi Udegarami. That would be the Japanese terminology. Some people call it the Omoplata. I actually don't know what it means. And love that Omoplata back roll. And I go for that little footlock there. Yes, I'm so happy. Pump my fist. A little cheap. Footlock situation there. Just want to get one on George. You know what I mean? He's so hard to submit upper body. You know, I think he's the one guy, like, you put him in juji position, and he's so freaking strong. You know, it's like getting that arm out is difficult. It's really good choke defense, you know? So, yeah, that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching.